G'day folks. Well, I've had a ton of questions over the last 12 months on how car air conditioning works. And although you can sort of piece it together over the internet anyway, I just figured I'd take a few minutes to explain it before I strip this uh, sand and scroll compressor down. It's the first time I've done one of these, so it'll be an interesting video. Seems to work alright, it's just the uh, bearings feel rough as guts, so I'm guessing the main bearings and seals have gone in it. But I know people have had speculated how car air conditioning and stuff works, but <clears throat> in reality it's no different to any other air conditioner. Be it a split system or a box package unit or anything like that. The system's pretty simple. You've got engine driven compressor, which is that. A condenser coil, which is that. In the front of the car, in front of the radiator. A receiver dryer instead of a filter dryer, which is that identical to that one, basically the same product, just this one's new. Uh, contains a desiccant, a filter screen and a volume to collect liquid. So excess liquid can just fill up in here and there's just a dip tube that allows liquid out through the bottom of it. It also picks up for surging and that sort of thing. You're not always running the compressor at a set speed. So there are a few little differences in how the system behaves given that say in stop start city traffic it's a little bit different to a normal refrigerant compressor that's running at a, a set motor speed all the time but in reality this just makes up for it you just add extra refrigerant you might have a couple of kilos of refrigerant in the system instead of 800 grams or something in a window unit of the same capacity so there are a few tiny little differences with auto AC systems but they're not major they still work on the old vapor compression cycle thing whatever you want to call it um, I'm not an auto AC specialist, I'm not actually a fridgy, so uh, my neighbours are fridgy and my best friends are fridgy, so I'm learning as I go. Um, liquid comes out through the uh, receiver dryer and goes straight to the thermal expansion valve, which is in here. Some of them have separate removable valves, this is a monoblock type thing, a fairly modern coil system for a truck. Uh, Thermal expansion valves are best explained in a separate video, but it's an expansion point between high pressure, liquid refrigerant, and low pressure side, which goes back to the compressor, and the pressure difference causes evaporation. If you've ever let gas out of a uh, can of lighter fluid, a lighter recharge propane can, and had the liquid evaporate on your skin, you would know that it gets really cold really quickly. That's how refrigeration works. So that's all it's doing is just injecting a spray of liquid into an environment of much lower pressure. And that obviously causes the liquid to start evaporating and bubbling up through the coils and absorbs heat that's coming from the air flowing over them. So all it's doing is absorbing the heat, turning back into gas rather than liquid and coming back to the compressor. So it returns through the suction line, the big fat hose on your air conditioning system, back to the compressor. So the compressor will compress it. It'll take a bit of heat from the compressor itself. They do get hot mechanically. Uh, motorised, electric motorised compressors take heat from the electric motor as well. And it goes back out to the condenser where it exchanges it with the air passing over the coil fins. So. All it's doing is taking heat from one place, putting it in another one, and just repeating the cycle over and over and over again. There's really not much to it. But when you turn your air conditioning on, on the, in the car, all it does is energise that clutch and turn your fan and other stuff on. But for the main part, for the main part of the system, this pulley is just freewheeling as the engine's running, and then when it calls for cooling, it pulls that in. Hang on. If I can clamp onto it. Now it's locked in with the clutch. It's locked in with the compressor. So it'll drive. And if I take that off... Now the uh, engine driven pulley freewheels. Pretty straightforward. Magnetic clutch turns mechanical motion into compressed gas and circulates through the system. You've got compression, condensation of gas to, or vapour to liquid, evaporation of vapour to gas and absorption of heat, 
carrying heat back out through the suction line which is the bigger line on all these systems back to the compressor back to compression and heat rejection through the condenser there's really not much else to it um, there's tons of literature online anyway um, yeah there's nothing special between apart from the design there's nothing special between one of these and your average split system like that one up there or any other window unit or box unit refrigerants differ R134A is not used in many window units or anything like that, or split systems. But it's just a pressure difference, pressure temperature difference. And of course you can't run reverse cycle in a car air conditioner for various reasons. And I'm not going to go into that at the moment, but yeah. Standardised cooling stuff, nothing wrong with that.